Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Hi everybody, welcome back to the second lecture of chapter three. In this lecture, we're going to discuss polar coordinates in the plane. All right, this is the setup and this is the key figure. The plane, x, y, those are the coordinates defined by the directions i, j, the standard i, j orthogonal unit vectors. And r is going to be a position vector emanating from the origin, okay? And we say it, it makes an angle theta with respect to the horizontal x-axis. And now we're going to construct two unit vectors. R1, which is a unit vector that's going to be in the direction of increasing R. And theta1, which is a unit vector in the direction of increasing theta. So if R were to rotate around in theta, theta would increase in the usual sense of increasing theta, and that would be the direction of theta 1 and r1. So these will be unit vectors, so for all time their length is 1, but their direction will change. Okay, so what we want to do is define unit vectors r1, theta 1, in terms of our familiar unit vectors i and j. So with a little geometry, you can see that r is r cosine theta i plus r sine theta j. It's very simple. And so the unit, a natural unit vector, sorry, I said that too fast, r is r, magnitude r, which is r that is not bolded here, r cosine theta i plus r sine theta j. Okay, so then a unit vector would be position vector r divided by its magnitude, and that would just divide away the r's above. And we have cosine theta i plus sine theta j. And that's a vector of unit magnitude. In fact, you can compute its magnitude and check that. All right, what about theta? Well, using the same bit of geometry, you can ch check that theta 1 is so minus sine theta i plus cosine theta j. You can check that it is unit length, and you can check that it is perpendicular to r1 just by taking the dot product of the two. Now, with a little bit of algebra, with this definition for r1 and theta1, you can write i and j in terms of um, r1 and theta1. And now you have a complete relationship between the two sets of unit vectors, ij and r1 theta1. Now we want to compute the time derivatives of r1 and theta1, because they can change in time as, as r varies, clearly. r can grow, and it can rotate. r can change its length, and it can change its direction, in other words. But i and j, their length, is, their length and direction are constant in time. So we just differentiate with respect to time, and we can easily see, using the relations we have already derived, that r1 dot is theta dot times theta 1. That's nice and clean. And theta 1 dot, we differentiate the definition of theta 1, using the fact that i and j, their derivatives are zero, and we get minus theta dot r1. So that's a very interesting relationship between r1 dot and theta1 dot. And it's useful to think about that and what it may mean. Okay. With those in hand, we can now compute the time derivative of r in the r1 theta1 coordinate system and the second derivative of r 
with respect to time in the R1 theta 1 coordinate system. So the first one, we just use the product rule, dr dt. Okay. Because r is length of r, magnitude r times r1. And using the expressions we've already derived, dr dt is r dot magnitude r dot r1 plus r theta dot theta1. So for velocity, we have a radial component and an angular component. And the time derivative of velocity, or the acceleration, we do exactly the same thing. It's a bit more involved. But now we have also a radial component, r double dot minus r theta dot squared, and an angular component, acceleration, r theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot. So I will leave it at that for the moment for these terms. Now we're going to learn how they're interpreted in great detail later on. And understanding the calculations that were involved in here in the geometry is really important. It's quite straightforward if you have the, the basic principles down, but it isn't. Th these are great calculations to go back through because if you can do them practically in your sleep, you really understand what's going on in this uh, kinematic description of polar coordinates. Okay, that's enough for now. Next time, we're going to start line integrals.